Good afternoon, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. What I want to kind of cover with you today are a couple simple machines. And simple machines are something that we teach at the Bushcraft 101 level here at the Pathfinder School because simple machines allow you to do lots of things with bushcraft and help you affect better survivability if you're using it as a survival skill. Now, there are lots of ways that you can either move weight horizontally or lift weight vertically. Simple machines allow you to do that. However, selecting the proper simple machine for the application is also a very important skill to have. So what we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna talk about the Spanish windlass. We're gonna talk about the Archimedes windlass. We're gonna talk about a pulley for making a simulated block and tackle system. And all of these things that we're going to do, we're going to do as if we had bushcrafted them. The only thing we're gonna use that's modern right here in this application is, we're gonna use a stack of weights to simulate the weight. And I'm going to use an overhead rafter to simulate either a overhead tripod that I've built or an overhead branch that were strong enough for this application. So what I've got set up right now is a block and tackle system of two pulleys, which has given me a, it's having the weight basically. It's cutting the weight in half that I would have to move. So if I've got 60 or 70 pounds on here, I'm only moving 30 or 35. And we're gonna walk through how I've got this set up. But the first thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is simple windlasses and how they work and how effective they are for what you're trying to do. Okay, so today, let's first discuss the most simple form of a windlass, which is called the Spanish windlass. A Spanish windlass, commonly used in bushcraft, is a piece of paracord that's wrapped around two times on a buck saw, a toggle placed in the middle and twisted until that buck saw is tight. That's a perfect application for a Spanish windlass. You're never going to over twist it. You're only going to twist it until you get this absolutely tight and then you're going to stop. You don't really care if this cord's compromised after the fact because you're never planning to use it for anything else. When you start to use cord over and over again or recycle that cordage, then you have to worry about what you're doing to this rope with this twisting action because you are drastically degrading the tensile strength of this rope by doing that. And you can even damage the rope by doing this depending on what type of rope you're using. So you have to be very careful of what you do and cognizant of what you're using that line for and what's the best choice if you're carrying very small amounts of cordage with you out in the woods. So for me, here's my take on that real fast, just so we understand. I would carry bank line number 36, tarred Mariner's bank line. It's a nylon twisted rope, basically, that's been tarred. I would carry that as my expendable cordage. A roll of 36 weighs about a pound. Nothing to it. I would carry my... Rapid deployment ridge line, which equals about 30 feet of 550 parachute cord, and the rest of my cordage management system in my kit. So I'd have a couple soft shackles in there. I'd have some extension lines for my tarp system. I'd have extender lines for those lines on top of that, and then I would have one in my pocket and one in my pack. If you have any questions about that, you can look at my cordage management system video, and that will explain it. Today, what we're going to use mainly is going to be this rapid deployment ridge line. We're also going to use a couple soft shackles. And we're going to use a Prusik loop that's made out of 36 bank line in this video as well. And you should have those already on your rapid deployment ridge line because you've got them on there already for toggling. So with that said, if we have some weight and we need to move it, and today what we're going to talk about is lifting vertically. We're not going to talk about horizontal, but all of these things apply just as well horizontally as they do vertically. Okay, so remember, if we're going to use a Spanish windlass to move something over distance, we're gonna to have to elevate it a little bit, either by being able to pick it up completely off the ground, in which case we could probably just drag it without the windlass, or at least elevate it enough to begin with to get a log underneath it so it will roll as we're pulling it. That would be a good application for a Spanish windlass because we only need to lift it up far enough to get something underneath it, and then we can take all that tension off our line. But still yet, I would say there's better options than a Spanish windlass for that, so you have to understand the application and the wear and tear of what you're doing. Because if I'm going to carry this 30-foot ridge line, and that's really the only paracord I'm carrying, I'm going to use this for a lot of things if I have to. And wear and tear on this are important, which is the other reason we've talked about this new system of rapid deployment ridge line that puts a lot less wear and tear on the mantle or the mantle of this rope compared to pulling knots in it, yanking them out over and over and over again. 
So conservation of resources is important as well. And we're going to try to look at that when we're doing these systems as well. So a Spanish windlass, again, is just a loop of line with a toggle in the middle, and we're spinning it. So if we've got a stack of weights here on the ground, which I do, and I've got a rafter overhead, that gives me something I can make a loop of line. So if I'm using my rapid deployment ridge line, I'm just going to undo it, which is why it's hanked, so it doesn't get tangled up along the way. I'm probably going to double it up if I have enough space to do that, although it's not truly necessary. But because I have enough cordage with this 30 feet to be able to do that, there's no sense in not doubling it up if I can. So I'm going to divide it in half, and this also makes it easy to attach because I just need to throw it over a rafter. All right, down here on the bottom, I've got a stack of weights. I've got probably 50, 60 pounds of weights right here. And I've got them on something that's got an eye on the end of it for these demonstrations. Now, I've thrown one loop of this line over the rafter and my bowling loop and my stop knot are on the other end. So all I'm going to do with this to make it real easy on myself is I'm going to feed this loop through just like this. I'm going to come up through here and I'm going to create a sheet bend knot right here. So to create that sheet bend, all I'm going to do is come up through the loop, come around the back side of the loop, just like this, and then come back down over the rope through the loop like this. And that's going to create a sheet bend knot in that line. All right. Now we've got our line right here that we're going to put our toggle between like this and start spinning. Okay. Now, once we've got these two lines, we're going to have to start spinning these lines to tighten them. And it's going to take quite a few revolutions to tighten this cord up. And then you're also going to have stretch involved once it does get tight. So we're going to keep spinning this around, spinning it around. Bear in mind, our weight has not even moved a single bit yet because we're not tight. We've got to get this to the point where it's tight first. So we're putting lots and lots of twists in this cordage. And that is horrible for your rope. So bear that in mind, if you're using this for something in an emergency, use the best application you can. If you don't care anything about this rope, then it doesn't matter. If you only have to lift this weight a few inches, it doesn't really matter. But if this is something from your kit, like your rapid deployment ridge line, you wanna take care of it, all right, now it's starting to move. So I'm gonna to continue to twist this. I'm gonna hold it to keep it from spinning as best I can. And you can see now that it's starting to lift up, but it's only lifting up a fraction at a time as I spin this. So I've got that thing about three inches off the ground now, and I've got this rope spun fairly tightly all the way down. You can see the twist in this rope all the way down now. So you can see to get this only three inches off the ground, I had to twist this rope all the way down. To raise this thing very far, I'm gonna to have to put a lot more twists in this rope. I don't wanna damage this rope, so I'm not gonna twist it anymore. I'm gonna let it go, and we're gonna to go to a different system. Okay, so we lifted that off the ground, now we've got the sheet bend knot. Advantage is, all we have to do is break the back of that sheet bend, and it's all gonna come undone. We had a good solid connection there. Now we can recover our rope and start again. Now again, it's really important we can recover this rope. So I've got it looped over the top of that rafter and not pulled up to something like a girth hitch because I want to be able to recover this and I can pull this whole rope over. So all I'm doing now is I'm putting another sheet bend knot in here to start off about the same way we started off the last time. Okay, now we're going to treat this as one line and we're going to get two sticks. The diameter of these sticks, number one, is going to dictate how much we're taking up at one turn the length of this stick, of the other stick, will amount to how much leverage we have, okay? Again, if this is horizontal, you need something really big if you're trying to move much weight. For this, we're not gonna need much that's very big because we're only lifting about 60 or 70 pounds. So we're gonna put one stick in the front. We're gonna come in from behind and trap the other one and bring it over just like this and turn into it just like this. As soon as we did that very first turn, that weight left the ground. This is under tension right now. That weight left the ground on the first turn. Now we're wrapping, as we pull, we're wrapping around an arbor. And we're taking up that much every time we turn this 
we're taking up that much. And all we have to do is control these. If we want to lock it off, we just turn it sideways. We don't have to worry about tying anything off. And now we can just continue up just like this. Obviously we want to stay clear of everything because we don't want this thing hitting us in the face. But we've got the bottom of these weights up to my waist already. And we've only made a couple, three turns. We didn't have to tighten anything up. We didn't have to stretch our rope or any of that stuff. We're taking advantage of all four of the ropes at the same time and wrapping them around a single arbor, which is putting them under a lot less stress than they would be under if we were doing it the other way. So we have one arbor that we're turning the lines around. We just have to keep that arbor steady and turn this one over the top, just like this, and stay out of the way of it in case it lets go. Come all the way around and lock it off just like that to suspend that weight off the ground. Again, we're putting a lot less stress on the rope by just rolling it up on an arbor than we would be otherwise. And it's a very simple thing to do. It's pretty much just taking these sticks, wrapping this one over, crossing them, and start to wind. And it is really that simple. But we get a lot more traction on the rope. We gain more mechanical advantage. And we're lifting this weight a lot further, a lot faster. And we can lock it off without any extra ropes to do it. Now, if this gets much heavier, again, proper application, right? If this gets much heavier, then we're going to have to have a lot bigger logs and things like that if we're trying to do something that is up and down. If we're doing something that is horizontal, same thing, bigger logs. If you look at some of my videos in the past, I've got videos on the flip-flop winch by Morse Kahansky, which is nothing more than a windlass on the ground. But you've got to have large logs for that. So if I get to the point where I want to lift something like this and it's heavier than I want to try to mess with that and try to control that while I'm moving it, then I'm going to go to a pulley system. I can cut the weight in half of this with two simple pulleys. So you say, well, pulleys, that's not something I'm carrying every day. No, it's not. But I am carrying soft shackles and I can make a pulley from just a cut off tree. Bore a hole in it, cut a V-notch in it, and I have a pulley. When I put the soft shackle through there, I now have a pulley system. So we'll hook one pulley to the bottom We'll hook one pulley in between on a prusik loop. And remember that this system is only going to be as strong as its weakest link. In this case, we're going to use a number 36 bank line prusik loop, which is only about 310, 320 pound tensile strength without any knots tied in it at all. We're only lifting about 70 pounds. Not going to be an issue. Okay. Okay, because we've got this loop on here, we're gonna go ahead and attach our soft shackle to that loop. If this is a log or something, then we just tie another piece of our utility cord around that, and we use the soft shackle on that instead of around the log if we didn't have to. So we're just going to take this soft shackle, and we're going to take it apart and stick it through this loop real quick, and then we're gonna put it back together. I've got videos on this as well on my channel, how to make these paracord soft shackles, it's pretty simple. And basically, it's a self-locking lark set on a knot there. And now we have a pulley here. All right, so once we have our pulley and our soft shackle attached, now we're going to take this and we're going to put it through here and just create a girth hitch and take it all the way up to the branch. And we're going to treat these two as one piece of rope. We're going to take them through this pulley, just like this. And we're just going to let it sit there for right now while we set the rest of this up. Because now what we need to do is we need to put a prusik hitch on this line that we can slide. So to make that prusik hitch, we're just going to use one of our prusik loops if there's not already one on our ridge line. And we're going to control that connecting knot, which is double fisherman's. And we're going to just put a bite over the top. And we're going to go through that bite with the rest of the loop three times. So there's twice around, three times around on that bite. And we tighten that down and dress everything up. That's going to be a friction holding hitch that we can attach another pulley to. So before we slide this up on the rope, we'll take our second pulley and we'll attach it to that. And we'll also throw this line that's coming up from this pulley 
over the top of it, just like this. And then we'll just create that large head again, come through it with our stop knot, just like this, to create that soft shackle situation. Now we can run this up the line. Now we'll adjust and set these two ropes in our pulley. We'll go up to the top and set that pulley. And then we'll use a toggle to pull this down. So now we have our top pulley dressed. We have our bottom pulley dressed. We're just going to take one of those same sticks that we used a second ago. And we'll just take and put a Marlin spike hitch in this line. Just by taking a loop and going up the line just like this to create a bite. We'll put our stick right through that bite. And that's going to be our toggle for lifting. And now... We should be able to just walk backwards and be pulling half the weight. So by doing this, we've created a different form of mechanical advantage and getting two to one mechanical advantage on this piece with two pulleys and two parts of the rope moving at the same time. Again, this is gonna take longer to manufacture these pulleys, obviously, than to do the other two methods. I carry two types of rope. I carry paracord, I carry bank line. Paracord will do anything that I needed to do along with bank line in any bushcraft scenario. I'm not going to be hanging off of this, although I have hung a hammock off of 550 cord. I have actually done a steep angle descent off of paracord. I would never recommend anybody do that. But what I'm saying is I have enough confidence in 550 cord to know that that's going to be one of my main cords in my kit. And there's reasons for that because I'm never going to do some of those things or even something like this with bank line most likely because it's just not safe, number one. And number two, it's terrible for the rope. When you're putting things under stress and strain, you want something that's made to take that kind of friction and Kermantle ropes made for that. Okay, so more of the story here, guys, is that there's lots of ways to do different tasks. Understanding what the best and most effective way to do a certain task is, it's what's important in bushcraft and survival. Understanding what's gonna put the least amount of stress on the rope that you have, whether that's paracord, laid rope, braided rope, Kermantle rope like paracord of a larger diameter for climbing and things like that, Whatever you're doing, understand what load you're putting on it, what stress you're putting on it, how much you may be damaging that rope. Because if it's something that you're carrying like your ridge line that you're going to use over and over and over again, and that's your utility rope for things like we're doing right here with our ridge line, I don't want to get it trashed out so bad that I can't trust it for other things later. So I'm going to use the best method that puts the least amount of stress on that rope I can to get the desired task done. Now, all of these systems will work. They will all do the same thing. Some of them do it faster than others. Some of them take longer to set up than others. And some of them are a lot less stress on the rope itself than others. Those decisions you have to make on the fly. Guys, listen, I appreciate you joining this video today. I just want to throw a couple things out there to you. This will go in the Rope Clinic series of videos. So I would encourage you to watch that. There's lots of POV knot tying in those videos. 40, 50 different knots, hitches, and lashings in that series. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video in this series as soon as I can, guys. Thanks. Thanks.